Hello, uh, I'm Richard. I'm a primary school teacher from Bristol in the UK. How long ago did you lose faith in the New Testament? About a year ago, I realised that um, I'd lost faith in the New Testament, but there have always been things that I found difficult. There have always been certain theological problems or conflicts which I thought were uh, incongruent or conceptually unviable. When you began your journey, what was your faith? Did you lose faith in Jesus at the same time? Um, I was a Christian, I, I grew up a Christian, so I made a commitment at about five years old. I was in a, a church in London and I asked my parents, why are we here? And they said, we're Christians. And I said, am I a Christian? And they said, that's up to you. You need to decide that for yourself. So I thought about it. And I thought that I believe in God and I think that he made the world and I find him to be very lovely. So I became a Christian. Um, and that was my understanding of things, that believing in God as a British white kid in a certain area from an Irish family, that my avenue was Christianity. That was my choice. That was, that was the option. Um, and as I grew up, I was taught by the church to push God into the background and bring Jesus into the foreground so that whenever I prayed, I had to put Jesus in there. My, my prayer was valid if I prayed it in Jesus' name. And it, my sins were forgiven by Jesus. And that Jesus was the method by which God created the world even. Um, so, yeah, when I, it, that, was the, that was the point when, when I came to a greater understanding of what the Bible actually says. And when I came to a greater understanding of the position of Jesus within that, then I, I lost faith in Christianity, the New Testament and Jesus as, as one uh, corporate problem to my understanding of God. What events led you to question the New Testament? My wife and I returned to my hometown. We went to my parents' church and we spoke to the minister about getting married. I asked him lots of questions because it's, it was very important to me that the words I was saying and the promises I was making, I understood fully. This is Roman and that's Roman and some of them he didn't know where they came from. So I said, okay, okay, so is there any marriage ceremony in the Bible? And he said, no, there's not. This is all things that we have, we have constructed based on our theology. I said, okay, so in my head... I understood Christian, Christianity to be a Jewish religion. Jesus was a Jew, all of his followers were Jews, everyone in the Bible, with a few exceptions, were Jewish. So what do the Jews do when they get married? And he didn't understand why I was asking. He didn't understand why I was bringing up Judaism. So he said, the Jews don't believe in Jesus. And I said, right, but Jesus was a Jew. And I think he said, but Jesus didn't get married. I said, okay, but... Had he had done, what would he have done? What would be the process? And this was still really re rooted in Christianity. This was still really me. I, I was asking because I, I saw Jesus as the answer to everything. So I asked the question. And he said, oh, the Jews, when they get married, they just, they just take a wife. And I said, well, obviously this guy doesn't know anything about Jews. He doesn't know anything about Judaism, and neither do I. So for me to believe that Christianity is based on Judaism, I need to understand Judaism. So I started reading. And I read for about two years, everything I could. And this whole thing was a, was a Christian pursuit to really understand what did God say to the Jews. The Jews believe in the Torah. The Christians believe that the Torah is the word of God and it then continued on to the New Testament. So I need to understand this. And when I understood it, I realised that Jesus, A, doesn't fulfill the prophecies of Messiah. B, that Isaiah 53 is the only thing ever quoted as a prophecy of Messiah. And that in itself is not sustainable as an idea. 
and see that being the Messiah doesn't mean being God. I didn't know that. I didn't know what Messiah meant. When I found out what it meant, it totally changed my concept. Um, so yeah, it, it was really more of a having a greater understanding. What effect did your leaving Jesus have on your personal relationships with families and friends? Um, it's a very, um, it's actually a very Christian way to put it, leaving Jesus. Um, it's more comfortable than the phrase rejecting Jesus, which is often what's used. Um, I don't think that's what happened. I didn't leave him or reject him. I, I realised or I, I came to a belief that my understanding of him was different than it had been before. I, I have no problem with Jesus. I think he was probably a very wonderful man. Um, but the effect it had on my personal relationships, I was incredibly lucky. Um, I have a very tolerant and open-minded group of family and friends. And so I told my wife, after struggling for a long time with the ideas, I came to her and I said, I think, I think I need to be a Jew. And she said, right. And I said, how do you feel about that? And she said, well, to be honest, I'm relieved. Which is not what I was <laughs> expecting. She said, look, you know, you... For you, this is new, but the rest of us have seen it coming a mile off. You know, the, the way you've been talking for a long time, this is where you were headed. So I was very lucky in that, in that capacity. And with regards to my family, I started asking questions. And in the beginning, I got a lot of, well, I don't know that one, or why are you asking? But now, genuinely, the questions are starting to be taken seriously. And people are starting to try and answer the questions. And I feel really good about that. Um, because these are questions that need to be asked. Whatever answer my family arrive at, whether they continue to be Christians or stop being Christians, whatever answer is fine, as long as they're asking questions. And I'm really excited about that. Is your understanding of a relationship with God different now than before? Absolutely. Absolutely. Before, I had to interject Jesus into everything I did. If I was looking in the Old Testament, my tendency was to say, okay, where's Jesus in here? What's, where's Jesus in this passage? Where's the reference? How do I, how do I get him in there? Um, and now I just read it and say, what does it actually say? Rather than always looking for Jesus, I, I listen to God and what he has to say, what is his opinion on things, which is, and what is the history? You know, what, are, what have the Jews experienced over there? Thousands of years of listening to God. So that immediately is, is odd because I don't have an intermediary. I don't have a, a messenger or a, or a chaperone between me and God. I can just come to God. And I don't have to say, this guy is the son of God. I can say, we're all children of God. And one to one, Hashem is my father. God is, he's the source. So it's all about him. There's even a... Uh, a song that Christians sing, it's all about you, Jesus. And really, that's right. In Christianity, it's all about Jesus. Whereas, what would you say to someone who has questions about the New Testament? Ask questions. Lots of questions. And make sure you get the answers to your questions. If anyone says to you, it's a matter of faith, say, okay, fine. And then go around them and find out the answer to your question. Because it's not fair for people always to tell you that there's no answer or you don't deserve an answer. Keep looking. Keep reading. Find out the answers to your questions. And wherever that leads you is good. God's in control. Were there people who helped you on your journey at any point? Absolutely. Firstly, my family and friends helped me incredibly by being patient and putting up with all my excited, frustrated, um, overjoyed and angry exclamations of, oh, you'll never guess what the Bible says. Or, do you know that with this thing that we've been told, or do you know they misquoted that, or they've changed this word, and they put up with that, and it's got to have been incredibly tiring because they had years of it. Um, so that, that helped incredibly. Um, and then in the abstract, uh, Rabbi Michael Skobach, 
and Rabbi Tovia Singer helped me incredibly. Although their, their videos are, are designed to teaching Jews about Judaism, because they're actually tackling the relationship between Christianity and Judaism, it's incredibly useful for Christians or Christians who are questioning or ex-Christians because it answers those questions. Until these guys started working, Christians only knew about Jews from other Christians. Christians only learned about Torah from other Christians. And it was a cycle of Chinese whispers which was getting out of control. We'd really lost our way. But these guys are sharing the chokhmah, the wisdom with the rest of us, which is incredibly helpful. And in recent times, uh, my Jewish friends have got involved and they're putting up with me as well. Um, my friend David and Rod Bryant, Rod Reuven, David Bryant from Nati, incredibly helpful uh, person to me and he's really got involved and uh, Ira Michelson as well. The, if you need support, it's out there. The, the internet is now a phenomenal tool for connecting you to other people that are going through the same thing. But there's very few of us asking these questions, but you can find them. Um, um, uh, uh, Study of Judaism on Facebook, um, Clyde Bocha Chodesh on Facebook, and April Pitts' group, um, Leaving Christianity to Find the Truth. All of this is on Facebook. F loads of people will help you. Um, what is the best thing about being where you are now and what is the most challenging? Oh, it's Okay. The most challenging thing is that I used to know where I was. I used to know who I was, where I fitted in, um, what was my relationship to other believers. Everything was dogmatic and I knew exactly what I was supposed to do and when and that was very easy. Um, it was also very restrictive in terms of learning and constrictive in terms of understanding. So the really hard thing is that I've lost that. I'm now off the lead, in the wild, in the desert, not quite at Sinai, and I don't know quite who I am or where I fit in. But that's also really wonderful. It's a mixed bag. It's the most challenging thing and it's the most wonderful thing. If you could go back and change uh, one thing, uh, would you? Uh, and what would it be? No, no, I wouldn't because um, struggle, uh, the, the adversary, the, the difficulty, the hardship, the shatan is really, it's through struggle that we, that we really blossom as, um, in our, in our, in our, deep understanding of what's really happening. So I wouldn't go back and take away any struggle, uh, but I also wouldn't go back and add any in, because it's not really been easy. Um, so everything that I've managed to overcome, I'm glad happened, and I'm glad I am where I am, and I'm glad I am where I am, so I'd change nothing. And that's important to remember in future struggles, that someday I'll look back on these struggles and go, I'm glad they happened too. Um, thank you very much for letting me share my story with you.